I'm going to talk about diabetes and fasting. Fasting is practiced in uh, several places worldwide due to religious and social requirements. Uh, for example, for Muslims, Muslims, they fast during the holy month Ramadan, and some Muslims also fast during other days, uh, like lunar days, like uh, Mondays and, uh, and Thursdays every week, but not all Muslims can do this. Uh, Jewish also fast during Yom Kippur, Kippur Day, and they are single days of fasting in Jewish religion. For Hindus, they have also single days of fasting. And for Christians, um, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. But for Coptic Christians, like in uh, Egyptian Coptics, they fast many days of the year. And for Mormons, they fast also once a month for a single day. Uh, the philosophy of Muslim fasting, during Ramadan, healthy adult Muslims should fast from dawn to sunset, uh, sunset. No food is allowed, no drinks, no uh, even oral medications are allowed during fasting hours. And this will involve a sudden change in lifestyle. For Christian fasting in uh, Egypt, Coptic Egyptians fast more than 250 days uh, per year, but uh, there are different types of fasting. Some fasting is like uh, Muslim fasting, but uh, they uh, eat uh, a little bit earlier than uh, sunset. And um, the most common type of fasting for Christian uh, Coptic Egyptians is uh, uh, a vegan diet. They uh, should not eat at all during the day any um, meat or uh, poultry or uh, any uh, fish sometimes. Some days are a long fish, some days are not a long fish. fish. It's different types of uh, fasting according to different uh, churches in Egypt. No animal products are allowed uh, or even eggs or butter, they cook using water or oil. Uh, this was a, a patient education session done by the Arabic Association for the Study of Diabetes and Metabolism in different churches to uh, let the patient know how to uh, manage uh, their Christian fasting. Ramadan. Um, Worldwide, uh, in 2010, there was 1.6 adherent Muslim population expected to increase to 2.2 billion uh, adherent Muslims during 2030. And due to the high global prevalence of diabetes, around 8.8, .8, and after an important fasting uh, study done, which is EPGR study, done in 13 Islamic countries uh, on uh, uh, 12,000 uh, Muslim uh, fasting diabetics. Uh, they found that 43% of type 1 diabetes fast during Ramadan, and 79% of patients of type 2 fast during Ramadan. These figures led to an estimation of more than 110 million uh, diabetic patients, Muslim patients fast during Ramadan every year. Uh, another study done by the, by the Arabic Association for the Study of Diabetes and Metabolism in 2016, we found that Egyptian Muslims are keen to fast. 98% uh, of diabetics, they intend to fast. They had the wish to fast before Ramadan. 79% uh, of them could complete the whole month fasting, and 12% could fast more than 20 days per the month, and 7% fasted less than 20 days 
and 2% they didn't have the wish to fast at all. What are the risks of fasting? There is a risk of progressive increase in the number of fasting hours uh, in summer with hot weather, and uh, this will have an important implication on Muslims who wish to fast. And those are the four major uh, risks of fasting. Hypoglycemia, due to long duration of fasting. Hyperglycemia, uh, due to uh, sometimes reduction in oral medication or insulin dose, or the high glycemic diet taken during Ramadan. Diabetic ketoacidosis, dehydration, and thrombosis. Um, this study was done uh, using uh, CGM, continuous glucose monitoring, during fasting hours, and they found that um, before uh, iftar, before uh, iftar is the main meal during Ramadan. It is a breakfast, but it is the main meal. Uh, it is after the sunset. And uh, the main uh, timing for hypoglycemia was just before this main meal at the end of the fasting hours. And then after breakfast, which is the main meal, hyperglycemia is maximum. Uh, for dehydration and thrombosis risk, uh, dehydration to, due to hot weather, due to manual work, due to osmotic diuresis sometimes uh, in uncontrolled diabetic uh, patients, and according to a survey done in uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, they found that 30% of the total cases of retinal vein occlusion happened during one month, which is Ramadan. But let those patients or persons with diabetes take the reward of fasting. Uh, how to make risk uh, quantification uh, according to the type of diabetes, whether allowed to fast or not allowed to fast. Uh, type 1 diabetics are not allowed to fast. Uh, pay, uh, pregnant ladies with their gestational diabetes or, uh, or diabetes with pregnancy uh, should not allow to fast. Patient medication, if the patient is having uh, multiple daily injection of insulin, they are not allowed to fast. Uh, individual hypoglycemic risk or hypoglycemic unawareness, uh, those with hypoglycemic coma happening uh, three months before Ramadan. The past Ramadan experience also of hypoglycemia or diabetic ketoacidosis. Uh, individual social and work circumstances like working in a desert, working in uh, bad uh, conditions, hot climate. Uh, and uh, Zadar Alliance, Diabetes and Ramadan Alliance, uh, made these uh, recommendations and high-risk patients, very high-risk patients, they are four groups. Very high-risk patients, they are not permitted to fast at all. High-risk patient, moderate risk, and low risk. Uh, high-risk patients, very high-risk patients are one of the following. Those with severe hypoglycemia within three months before Ramadan, diabetic ketoacidosis, within three months before Ramadan, hyperosmolar hyperglycemic coma within three months before Ramadan, history of recurrent hypoglycemia, history of hypoglycemia unawareness, poorly controlled type 1 diabetes, uh, and um, in Egypt, any type 1 diabetes with multiple daily injection of insulin, we don't allow to fast. Acute illness, pregnancy, Pregnant diabetic uh, ladies should not fast at all, according to Islam even. Chronic dialysis or chronic kidney disease stage 4 or 5, advanced macrovascular uh, complications, and old age with ill health. For the high-risk patients, type 2 with sustained poor glycemic control 
well controlled type 1, but mm, like I said, in Egypt we don't allow type 1 uh, to fast at all. They take the responsibility if they insist to fast. Well controlled type 2 on multiple daily injection of insulin or mixed insulin. Uh, pregnant ladies should not fast at all. Uh, chronic kidney disease, uh, stable macrovascular complications, comorbid conditions, uh, patient with um, uh, lifestyle performing intense <coughs> physical work in hot climate, uh, treatment with drugs that may affect mentation. Uh, if those persons insist to fast, then we should give some recommendation. We should advise the patient when to break the fast. If the blood glucose is less than 70, or if the blood glucose is above 300, they should break the fast. Any time, uh, even 15 minutes before sunset, they should break the fast. Um, to adjust the medication dose according to uh, fasting hours, and uh, to, to make good education to the patient before Ramadan uh, to know what are the risks, the possible risks. And this um, uh, advice or fatwa were taken to our association, the Arabic Association for the Study of Diabetes and Metabolism from the higher uh, religious authority in uh, Egypt. This fatwa uh, said that the doctor, the diabetologist, or uh, the good internist uh, should advise patients whether to fast or not to fast, and the patient should um, uh, consider their advice and follow their advice. And uh, also, um, this fatwa, this advice, helps us to convince patients who are not convinced uh, not to fast. This is uh, the advice signed by the higher authority, uh, the religious authority in Egypt. Because we, we sometimes find patients who resist uh, the decision of not to fast, uh, but we should uh, convince them. For a safer fasting, we should make a pre-Ramadan medical assessment about one month before Ramadan, we should see the patient to advise uh, the patient to make uh, pre-Ramadan uh, education, uh, to tell the patient how to uh, uh, choose a lifestyle, uh, not to eat uh, too uh, much uh, sugary food or glycemic food, and any possible treatment change also. Those are the key components of a Ramadan-focused educational program according to the Dar Alliance, Diabetes and Ramadan Alliance, to make risk quantification, to check if the patient is allowed to fast or not allowed to fast, and uh, to advise the patient to blood glucose monitor uh, and when to uh, make the blood glucose, and if the symptoms of hypoglycemia happen, uh, they should make uh, blood glucose testing or even they can break the fast if uh, they don't have um, a nearby uh, glucometer. Uh, fluids and di dietary advice and exercise advice, medication adjustment, and the most important information, when to break the fasting. Glycemic foods should be taken into account because as Orientals, we like to eat uh, dessert and uh, high glycemic foods, uh, especially during fasting uh, Ramadan. Uh, after uh, the sunset, we use, uh, I'm going to show you pictures <laughs> you will not imagine. Sweets taken in Ramadan are sugary and may necessitate a change in drug therapy. Foods like onion and garlic are hypoglycemic used uh, in cooking, again, medication or dietary tips may be needed. Uh, for Ramadan lifestyle, it's a habit uh, to use uh, dates, and dates are, are having mm, too much calories. Um, just after sunset, uh, Muslims eat dates. 
So we should advise them how many dates are allowed. Usually they take seven dates, but we can convince them to take one or three dates. This is the maximum. Uh, dates and um, uh, coffee and uh, tea after sunset, and then a huge meal with huge carbohydrate content and sometimes fat content. These are the lifestyle we should convince a patient not to follow. These are the oriental dessert with um, sugar syrup put on them. Uh, so uh, we uh, try our best to convince a patient to, to, uh, to uh, at least eat very small amount of these desserts. Uh, this uh, diet uh, um, example was done to, uh, to, to the patients uh, fasting Ramadan by the Arabic Association for the Study of Diabetes and Metabolism. This flyer is printed in Arabic. We distribute it to the patients, um, saying that after sunset, uh, you can take just one date, and then uh, the type of soup which doesn't contain um, fats or, uh, uh, or even uh, added creams or uh, flour. Uh, then the vegetable, it's safe to eat, uh, to eat uh, vegetables, whether cooked or salad. And a type of carbohydrate like bread or rice or macaroni uh, pasta. Uh, the protein and uh, the type of cooking of protein uh, boiled better. For uh, fluids, because they fast all the days, so they are keen to drink um, uh, something like juice or herbal uh, tea, uh, we should advise them how they can take this uh, juice um, homemade to, to be sure of the caloric content. And then the, the Muslim patients usually go to prayer uh, around uh, 19 minutes after sunset. This is considered a good exercise. After that, we, we tell the patient, if you want to take the dessert, you can take a small amount. If, if you can, you can replace the dessert with fruits, if we can convince them. Uh, then the patient makes their usual uh, work or lifestyle and Again, before the dawn, there is another main meal, which is suhoor meal. We advise the patients for suhoor to be the most late time before dawn, not to increase the number of fasting hours. And then we tell the patients that they can take uh, a good amount of carbohydrate like bread, and we can give examples of a suhoor meal, a good suhoor meal, so patients can resist uh, the hours of fasting. This is the taraweeh prayer, and the timing for taraweeh prayer, around 90 minutes after the main meal of breakfast, or called iftar, it is a suitable time to make exercise during Ramadan. And patients should not make exercise before breakfast during fasting hours. How to manage diabetic patients during Ramadan? And to start with oral anti-diabetic medications, and it is safe for the patients with type 2 diabetes uh, to take metformin, the usual dose of metformin. If the patient is taking one daily dose, then they should take it with the breakfast. If twice daily dose, uh, they can take it with uh, iftar and suhoor again. Three times daily dosing of uh, pre-Ramadan metformin, we can take a two third of uh, the dose at breakfast and one third of the dose at suhoor. For prolonged release metformin, we can give the whole dose at breakfast, iftar. For sulfonylurea, 
because they uh, are uh, uh, not glucose dependent, uh, they may need those adjustments. If the patient is well controlled before Ramadan, we may consider uh, those reduction of sulfonylurea. If the patient is not very well or very tightly uh, controlled before Ramadan, uh, we can give the usual dose of uh, sulfonylurea. If once daily, then it's taken with iftar, if twice daily, we can take the maximum dose with iftar and a smaller dose with a suhoor meal. Uh, uh, for older uh, drugs, they are not recommended, uh, like uh, glypenclamide. It's not recommended to use during uh, fasting. Um, this study was done uh, to check the risk of hypoglycemia and they found that risk of hypoglycemia is less with the second generation of sulfonylurea, like, uh, uh, like uh, glycoside, uh, it was the best one, followed by glimipride, but glypenclamide is not recommended during Ramadan fasting. Short-acting insulin secretagogues can be taken before meals, and they carry a low risk of hypoglycemia during fasting. Uh, it is safe to uh, treat the patients uh, with type 2 diabetes with acarbose during uh, fasting Ramadan, and GPP-4 inhibitors, they seem uh, very good drugs during Ramadan fasting, and there was uh, studies done to prove that they uh, are less hypoglycemic and um, may also allow the patient to have the advantage of fasting without uh, risk of hypoglycemia. Uh, this is a virtue study done uh, um, to check the effect of vildagleptin relative to sulfonylurea in Muslim patients with type 2 diabetes fasting during Ramadan. I, uh, I was one of the authors, and the virtue study uh, was uh, done in uh, several Muslim countries, and it is a prospective multinational real-world study. Two arms, arm with vildagleptin, plus or minus metformin, and the other arm is sulfonylurea, plus or minus metformin. Um, more than 1,300 uh, fasting type 2 diabetic patients from 10 uh, countries, including my country, Egypt. And this uh, was the result of the study. The patients with more than one uh, hypoglycemic event was uh, 123 um, incidents in uh, sulfonylurea group compared to 36 uh, cases in vildagleptin, and there was zero hypoglycemia in the group using uh, vildagleptin compared to 4% of severe hypoglycemic attack in sulfonylurea group. 3.5 folds less hypoglycemic events in, uh, in the group using vildagleptin and zero hypoglycemia, uh, severe hypoglycemia in the group received vildagleptin. Uh, this also was accompanied by better uh, glycemic control in the group used vildagleptin. Hemoglobin A1C was a little bit reduced, 0.2% uh, reduction after Ramadan, maybe due to a reduction of the dose of sulfonylurea during Ramadan fasting. For SGLT2, it's not yet uh, put in the uh, DAR uh, guidelines due to some caution about dehydration, but uh, it's going to be added in the next Ramadan that we can use uh, uh, SGLT2 inhibitors during Ramadan, but the patient should start at least one to two months before Ramadan. You, you shouldn't start the SGLT2 just at the beginning of, of Ramadan or a few days before Ramadan. 
And this study was done on DAPAC leflos in, in Ramadan. Maybe this w will be the, the reason for changing the guidelines in next Ramadan. Uh, for um, this is um, the, the American Diabetes Association guidelines published in uh, 2015. And for insulin patients, we said that multiple daily injection of insulin, a patient should not fast for those receiving uh, mixed insulin or basal bolus insulin, we should consider reduction of 30% of the insulin dose, and we should make the, uh, the large meal with the highest dose of insulin and to reduce the dose before the second meal, which is the suhoor meal. This is an important decision Patients should know when to break the fast because patients usually are overwhelmed and they don't want to break the fast. So we, we can give them an instruction when to break the fast during the fasting hours. All patients should pre, uh, break their fast if the blood glucose is less than 70 or even if there is hypoglycemic symptoms without um, using a glucometer. If the blood glucose is more than 300, if there is symptoms of hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia, dehydration or acute illness occurs, and those are the symptoms of hypoglycemia and symptoms of hyperglycemia, we should give instruction to the patient to know when they should break the fast if they feel these symptoms. And in summary, a pre-Ramadan assessment is vital for any patient who wish to fast, to evaluate the risk, to educate the patient to self-manage their condition during Ramadan, and to produce a patient-specific treatment plan. Most type 2 diabetic patients can fast safely during Ramadan. Patient taking metformin, short-acting insulin secretagogue, or sulfonylurea may need to adjust the dose. Patients taking alpha-glucosidase inhibitor, TZDs, uh, no dose uh, adjustment is required. A post-Ramadan follow-up consultation is recommended. In conclusion, Ramadan provides an excellent opportunity to initiate healthy lifestyle. Motivation for self-improvement is high at this time of the year. The patient wishes to fast, so he's um, having too much motivation to prove that he can fast. Uh, patients may take Ramadan fasting as a way to, um, to, to have healthy lifestyle or even for weight reduction. 25% of the patients lose weight by the end of Ramadan, 25% of, uh, of the patients increase weight and 50% of uh, diabetic patients maintain their weight after Ramadan. Thank you very much. This is my faculty of medicine, Cairo University. Second, uh, sec thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, your presentation. Unfortunately, there is no mm, too much time for discussion, but I think one, two very short questions. Uh, who wants to ask something? Dario? in your country, but also in mm -mm. Uh, Yes, this is um, very important. For uh, pre-Ramadan education, uh, usually you, uh, media are aware of uh, diabetes problem during uh, Ramadan, and uh, they are keen to interview diabetologists. Uh, 
uh, whether TV or um, uh, social media uh, or uh, magazines and uh, newspapers. We also distribute flyers on the patients mm -hmm. and everywhere. We, we give the advice everywhere because all the nation is prepared to fast Ramadan and diabetics are uh, most vulnerable uh, patients during Ramadan. So we can try to give advice as much as we can. Do you have any data uh, regarding glycemic control uh, after Ramadan in general? Uh, after Ramadan, or um, we, we, we made studies uh, every year for the past 10 uh, years. We, we did studies on fasting Ramadan. We have many arms. One of the studies are published uh, in the poster downstairs. Um, uh, our study showed that uh, pre-Ramadan education uh, helps patients to recognize hypoglycemia and to manage uh, themselves. And also uh, there was study um, about dose reduction during Ramadan. We found that uh, during the, the first two weeks of Ramadan, uh, there is dose reduction of insulin of about uh, 10 to 20 percent. And by the end of Ramadan, 20 to 30 percent of insulin dose reduction uh, are required. So these uh, studies help in making the recommendation and guidelines of uh, DAR Alliance. Uh, only a question. This is the last one. Uh, just I'm interested in incidence of acute complications during the, the Ramadan. Um, this is in the study. Um, uh, yes, I, I can't remember the incidence of complications, but uh, uh, we have um, a small incidence of hospital admission, uh, sometimes due to uh, uh, reasons not related to fasting, and some of the cases were uh, diabetic foot during Ramadan. And we advise patients with macrovascular complications not to fast. Um, we should convince patients with diabetic foot, macrovascular disease, uh, recent uh, any cardiac event or something, or acute cerebrovascular disease, uh, those patients should not allow to fast. But they insist to fast, and we see some complications.